Oh, shrimp! Jumbo shrimp. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's cold. Right. Guys, there is a sniper or snipers. You mean there's multiple? Possibly. Now, you can stand here. They're not going to be trying to shoot us now, are they? No, no, no. Hopefully not. Unless you see whether or not we can uh, we can find what we're looking are we, for. Are we allowed to move around or what? Um. So, yeah, just just from here, really. Don't go too far down. Speaking to Hot Dog a while ago about how we find stuff like this, apparently you look at what light's coming down, and if the shadows don't match the light is passing, of course, then you get good ghillie suit and cast the shadows. But, uh. Mm. Mm. I don't think mesh helps at all with that. <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. Anyone, any ideas? Okay, the first one. A little, little bit of a small bump over there. Yeah? Do you reckon? Oh, um, well, the mound comes up slightly. Yeah, just over there. So you tell me where where you think it is? Straight up. Straight there? Just over there. I think I found one. Next to the tree. What do you think of that lump of leaves over there? I think that's body shaped. I think they are somewhere with a little small grain because the leaf is hard to like imitate. So they are probably under the. That's where we are able to find it. No, yeah, 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 yeah. There's like some of the shadows, the shadows are very much like the shadows. So we done? How many are there? Two. I would say there's two. So where do we stay in the yard then? I reckon there's <laughs> one there. <laughs> and one there. One where? There and that part of the thing. Okay, if there's a sniper in front of us, wave your hand, make yourself seen. Hello. Where are you? Oh. You see him? There he is. You got him? See? Where? There. There. Alright. That's miles away. I thought, I thought we everybody is dead. Mm. You, you're looking around the area. Okay. The is, is there anybody else? There's a guy there. Yeah. The problem is the... What? See? No. I told you. Nicely done, gents. And now what's going to happen is that they'll, they'll, they'll give you some hints and tips. Yeah, we'll go over to Hot Dog, save his old bones. <laughs> oh. no, I couldn't even see you, you bastard. <laughs> Big crowd there. <coughs> yeah, massive crowd. Massive yeah. crowd. Yeah. yeah. I told everybody. But I'll tell you what, we'll go and have a perch near the Land Rover. And I'll just, uh, some you guys who some... <coughs> you like that? I'm trying. I'm Oh, yes. Everyone's had 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 roughly the same sort of ideas. Of where did anyone spot Jay? Um, no. to be honest, no. I think the distance might have been. Yeah, I mean, somebody mentioned that there might be somebody over there. Yeah, I me. Mean, I'm pretty sure I saw something like just tiny movements, but. I wasn't more, sure if it was the, the wind thing, or... The good thing with the wind is you, yeah. you, you can just do little readjustments and move, you know, twiggle your feet and, and so on because the wind will 
and move the foliage on your jacket, which in turn, the same as the foliage in the trees and everything, just little flickers. Um, in a nutshell, the basic principles of camouflage and concealment, they say, why are things seen? So you think to yourself, why, why are things seen? Obviously the shape is the first one. And what you do, it doesn't matter what you use, but there's different techniques, whether it be strings, uh, hessian sandbags, um, even bits of carpet I've seen on a, on a suit. Um, a ghillie suit doesn't make you invisible. What it does, it changes the shape of your body and distorts it from a person actually thinking what a man looks like. And it should give the impression of heavy foliage from a distance, um, i.e. the colours and the materials that you use. Like I said, there's, there's no right or wrong ways of doing things, but generally, you want to try and make your suit as light as possible, but we'll come back to suits in a bit. Same as shape on your rifle, you try and change the shape on your rifle by using scrim, um, or even bits of hessian and so on. <coughs> the next thing that will give you position away is your shine. Cam cream, three ways of doing it, right way, wrong way, just right. Now I personally think Jay's got a little bit too much on, so his face looks completely covered. But I like to keep a bit of pink still, because not everything in, in nature is green or brown. And you just try and break the shape and the shine up of, of your face, and things like jewellery, your hands, if you're not wearing gloves, cam your hands up. The shine on your scope, or any pieces of equipment that you're using, you need to dull down either with paint or with a bit of scrim. Next one is your silhouette. Now a silhouette doesn't, making a silhouette doesn't mean just a silhouette on the top of a hill. You could um, literally, you could, you could have to take a path along an area and there might be a brick wall. Now you can silhouette yourself by being next to that brick wall if you're wearing something that doesn't blend in with that. So you've got to think about where you're going to move as well. Um, there's additional principles which snipers then take into consideration when they're choosing their firing positions and also the camouflage. Um, your sound can give you position away so you've got to be as quiet as possible and obviously when you bounce around you're not going to start making rattling noises especially with airsoft with a, a plastic bottle full of BBs. Um, so you try and get all your gear squared away so you're not jingle jangles you know not making loads of noise. The next one is your movements. How you move, quick movements are seen by the eye. No matter how quick you are, they'll pick up on a quick movement. A slow movement is is better, especially when you're stalking or you need to change your fire position. Because then they're just gradual. You don't need to take 10 hours to move to one position, but a little movements at a time. Obviously then there's, there's various movements you can use. You can crawl, you can, um, what I call kitten crawl is literally where you're just edging your send forward bit by bit using your elbows, your hands and your knees and your toes. There's obviously what they call the crawl which is hands and knees, you're crawling like that, obviously you're cradling your weapon. Then there's also the monkey run which is a bit like one handed weapon and then your two feet and your hand, I like that, little long legs. Um, and there's one called the ghost walk as well, which is where you, you can feel out for things in front of you and you're literally woo, walking like a ghost, you know, stalking away. And the, your movements can obviously, if you're walking like a person, someone's going to pick up at that. But if you're stalking away and you're making strange shapes, you know, going up and down and so on, from a distance, that might, might help you out. The next principle you got to think about is shadows, i.e. you creating a shadow, so you've got to be cautious of where the sun is, but then also the sun moves, so if you've, you're, you're using shadow in a fire position, i.e. the shadow here, eventually as the day goes by, that shadow is going to move. I mean, it's not too bad in an airsoft game, but if, you, if you're stuck in a firing position for quite a long period of time, that sun's going to move. And instead of you being in the shadow, you might be lit up. Then there's trap shadow. 
which you can use. Trap shadow is shadow that's always going to be there. For example, see the big tree next to the building, to the left hand side, and you've got a, a, a skinny dark tree. You see all that dark area down in that riverbank? That is trap shadow. Um, 80%, 90% of the time, that is always going to be dark. That's a place to hide. In, in the shadows, that's not going to move. But the shadow's moving dur during the day, and you'll see the natural shadow moving as it leaves lines with the trees. When you're choosing a firing position, another thing you need to think about is something to blend into. So you need a backdrop. It's no good you choosing a brick wall, like we said with silhouette, if you're going to be cammed up. You want something to blend into. But then what you're also looking for as well is some screen, something to hide behind. So your ideal fire position, you incorporate all them principles and it's not always viable to find all of them at once, but that's the things you're going to take into consideration. Something to blend into, i.e. a good backdrop, some screen to hide behind, and it has been known in the past for snipers just to snip away a few pieces of grass in front of them just so that they've got line of sight to that target. Um, also with your camouflage, you've got to make sure that your field of view is not distorted by anything. So, Because you, you're living life through the bubble and a quick look round. You haven't got a good field of view once you're in a final fire position. Because next thing you know, somebody could come in on your flank, boom, you're gone. You try and incorporate as many, many pieces of them principles as you can and it's an effective way. Airsoft sniping is limited compared to the massive amount of things that you have to learn as a military sniper, mainly because of the minimum distance or the maximum distance of the sniper gun. So you've got to rely on, on, on sneaking about. Big ghillie suit, loads of gear on, through the middle of here you'll be seen. So you've got to choose routes and stalk and think about the areas that you, you, you're going for. Use dead ground, put something in between your target and yourself, and use that as cover. Say we've got enemy here, you literally, if he's behind a tree, use the tree and use the cover to get closer. personal safety really and using nature and the ground in front of you to get closer to make that kill shot. Going back to shape now, so ghillie suit does not make you invisible. It gives the impression of heavy damage and it helps. The first ghillie, ghillie suits were taught uh, the, the, the uh, sorry the um, Construction of ghillie suits was first taught to British soldiers in the 1920s. The Scottish gamekeepers were used to use strips of hessian and old materials to make what they called a ghillie suit. Ghillie is a Gaelic term, term for a man. So a man suit. Now they used to use them to deer and other livestock. Um, the ghillie was also a nickname of the Scottish gamekeepers. And they were employed by the British Army to teach marksmen how to stalk instead of animals. skills by the, uh, by the Scottish gamekeepers, they took that away and developed it and that was near enough the birth of the modern British sniper. Changing your shape using a ghillie suit, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. You can take a pair of combats, you can take a boiler suit, you can take a cheap and cheerful cape, which has got elastic all over it. Mainly biodegradable sandbags, which have been cut up and cut into string into strips, attached to the cape, and then elastic bands on it so that you can add your natural camouflage. The instructor once told me your ghillie suit should be 60% ghillie, as they called it, which is your hesse and your strings, your bits of uh, old army t shirts, you can even use socks, 
um, and then bags and bags of natural camouflage. The idea is, is you come up with natural camouflage every time you change environment and it will fall off when you're stalking or even just walking around. So the idea is, if you were to move from a light coloured field to a green field and you're going around the edges, you need to change your cam, which means you need to take your gear off. It might be hard, but you li literally have to do it yourself. If you're working as a sniper and a spotter pair, you can buddy buddy system and do that yourself. You could also just make a suit out of uh, a piece of netting, which is what Jay's done here. He's used some uh, vehicle scrim net, he's attached it to a combat jacket, and then he's tied the strings and all the hessian bits of green t-shirts, socks and so on. And he's done it that way, where you can actually use a pair of combats, put some knee, knee protection and some up, upper thigh protection. And the only thing you should be coming up, never cover the front from your breast pockets down, because you're going to lose it, it's going to snag, and nobody's going to see it when you're in your final fire position. So you want to be covering the back of your legs, all the way up to your bum, and the side of your legs, and then think all your back, your shoulders, and the top end here, and then what you need to do for your arms, you need to think about where your position is going to be. So you need to cover down here, across the top, your shoulders, up here, and then you don't need to worry about the armpits, really, because they're not going to be anything that's going to be visible from a target. That's how you'd select where to put your, uh, your materials on. You can either use a hat, Jay's used a hat there, he's also used a hood, um, you can use a baseball cap or a bush hat. What you need to do for the back of it, you want to cover from the side around to the back, you can use a piece of sniper scrim and stitch that to the back of the hat and then you can attach all your, your bits and bobs to it that way. Um, as well, obviously visible, all you need to do is attach a bit of what falls off on the floor when you're making your ghillie suit to a pair of gloves now and then they have the stitch on. Well, the best thing I've ever used is the glue called E6000 um, or shoe glue, as they call it. But it's expensive. Next best thing is a hot melt glue gun. Um, if I was to build a full suit, I'd stitch it because it does fall off in time. Um, capes, because it's a mesh cape, use a glue gun. It knit, the glue knits between the mesh and also knits between the hessian. Well, that any questions, guys? No. Huh? I covered everything. I don't oh. think I saw you before, um, now I've forgotten. <laughs> what would be the best way if you have to uh, go through open ground, if it was like the last option? Night. Wait till night. <laughs> <laughs> Long way. <laughs> yeah. Sniping isn't a rush, rush, rush thing. Literally, um, it's not a lot of time. It took us 30 minutes to do our kit, taking it steady, making sure it's right. Um, when you're choosing natural camouflage, it does fall off and it will die towards the end of the day. Um, it will change colour. What you're looking at, wherever your movements are going to be, or wherever your final fire positions are going to be, what you need to be looking for, and that same height is the natural camouflage. Your foliage that you're picking up, there's no point in picking up bushes and flowers that are at head height if you're going to be at floor height because if someone's looking around and they see a load of stuff that with berries on and, and tree leaves on the floor hang on a minute no so you, you want to look around at height that you're going to be working on if you're moving if you're doing a, an upward stalk if you're walking you know that's when you can add a few tree branches and, uh, and leaves you know if you're doing a walk if you're low down you look for the natural camouflage at that, that's at that level. Um, in the tests that you do in the army, they don't give you a great deal of time. And also you get two hours to do a stalk, get to your final fire position, fire off your two shots, identify a movement or a letterboard. If they haven't spotted you then, you do your, uh, your identification uh, exercise, purely that's so that they know that you can see them and you're not hitting a hole in the ground. What they'll also do after that is check your uh, your sights and your fire position to make sure they're correct for the for 
where you are and the distance that you are from the target. Um, but generally in airsoft, unless it's a big game where you've got loads of time, take it easy, that's when your good stalking skills and your camouflage and concealment plays a good part. When you're skirmishing and it's quick games, an hour game here, an hour game there, fallback games, I generally wouldn't bother camming up a ghillie suit. I'd just wear it, it breaks up the shape because you're moving forward so fast. It's better better off de defensively. We've, we've took some scalps hidden in a fire position and even though the guys are further up than us, we've, we've decided not to play until they've moved back to us and the enemy's pushed them back. We've gone back so that they, they can't see us finding a fire position. That's it really guys. Um, you know where I am on Facebook if anyone wants to ask me any questions. Um, Jay made me feel old the other day and um, even now where I've bought literature and, and other bits and bobs as that much has changed since I did my sniper training in 93 compared to what, what's on now. Um, but the principles of camouflage and concealment haven't changed since 1920. So think about your shape, your shine, your silhouette, your shadow, the movement you use, your natural camouflage and when you're choosing firing positions you want backdrop, nice bit of shadow, trap shadow preferably, a screen to hide behind and backdrop to blend into. And that's it guys, any, any more questions?